So today let's try to do some measurements in this switching power supply. This is the switching power supply from the last video where I was explaining how does it work. I was explaining it on this schematic which became a bloody mess during the explanation so I'm going to show a copy of it before I was drawing into it. So the link to the video is in the description and now the schematic of it should appear here. So now the schematic should be visible and let's start with some measurements. And of course this is going to be bloody dangerous because I'm going to stick it into mains and poke into it with my multimeter while it's live at mains voltage. So let's plug it in. I have a tungsten lamp here as a load. Now let's set my multimeter to AC volts and let's measure the mains first. The mains voltage is 234 volts. The nominal European mains should be 230. So it's very close because the tolerance is plus minus 10%. Now let's switch my multimeter from AC volts to DC volts. Because we are going to measure DC voltages. Now let's measure the rectified mains on the bridge rectifier. And I have to be careful not to short something out because it would be very violent. And the rectified mains is 321 volts. And this is about square root times the mains voltage. Or 1.414 times the AC voltage. So the rectification actually increases the voltage. Now let's try to measure the operating voltage of the chip. Which should be a low voltage, I guess something from 10 to 20 volts. And it is about 13 volts. So it seems okay. So this is the voltage of the auxiliary power supply going into the chip. Now let's try to measure how much does the chip draw from the auxiliary power supply. I could actually break some connection and put a current meter into it, but there is also a way to measure it without breaking any connection. So let's measure the voltage drop on this 100 ohm resistor. And the voltage drop is 0 0.18 volts. So the current can be calculated now. The current is I equals U over R. U is the voltage which is 0 0.18 volts. R is the resistance which is 100 ohms and this is 0 0.0018 amps or 1.8 milliamps. So the current consumption of the chip is 1.8 milliamps. Now what is the voltage on the startup resistor? And this one shouldn't be active now, it is just for startup. 0.24 volts. It's a 10 kilo ohm resistor which equals 10,000 ohms because you have to put the resistance in ohms and the voltage in volts into the formula. So it is a 0.00024 amps and this is 0.024 milliamps. This is just a very small current. So the startup pin is not active now and this is just a leakage current. Now what is the voltage of the snubber network resistors? Let's measure it. Wrong range. 100 volts. So the current of the resistors is about 0 0.833 milliamps. And the power dissipation is P equals U times I and this is 100 volts times the current which has to be in amps and the dissipation is 0 0.0833 watts. So it's less than 100 milliwatts. So it's not so much. And there are two in parallel, so the total power dissipation of it is 0 0.16 watts. Still not so horrible. And the voltage of the feedback pin... Only 0 0.68 volts. 
Now let's go to the output voltages. The main output, which should be 5 volts, is really about 5 volts. It's regulated quite accurately and the other ones are minus 12. It's actually minus 15. It's not very accurate. And plus 12 is about 11.7. So it's also not very accurate for the reasons I said in the last video. Because the voltage sensing is actually connected to the 5 volts. Now let's try to measure it without any load. Is it gonna change? The 5 volt should be still the same because it's regulated. Yes, it's almost the same. 5.03 and the other ones are 15.1 it has changed a bit and the other one 10.2 so it's very inaccurate so as you can see the output with the voltage sensing on it is very accurate and the other outputs are just flying up and down now the voltage drop of the LED in the optocoupler is going to be about 1 volt. It's a very low voltage drop because it's an infrared LED actually. Now the voltage at the input of the 431 voltage reference is 2.5, which I expected. Can I measure the operating frequency of it? Let's set it to frequency and let's try to measure it on the secondary of the transformer, the 5 volt one, and it doesn't show anything. But if I do this, I put the negative to the output of the secondary, and the positive is in the air, and it shows about 76 kHz, which may or may not be right. And as you can see, multimeters are not very good at measuring frequencies. Now let's try to load it using my variable test load. And the voltage doesn't drop much until about 2.2 amps. 2.3 and it drops significantly now. As you can see 1.7 amps, the voltage is still ok. 1.8, 1.9, 2 amps, 2.1, 2.2. 2.3 and now it's dropping. So the actual design current can be somewhere between 1 amp and 2 amps. I'm not trying to load the other outputs because they are probably for just a very low current. Like imagine this example, you have a transformer with two secondaries. One secondary is a powerful thick secondary for high power and it carries almost the entire power of the transformer and the other secondary is just very low power output with very low current wire or very thin wire which can't carry the full power of it. So now let's try to see it on a scope. This is at a light load and this is at a heavy load. Now I'm drawing less current and now more current. High current, low current at the output. It's just a very shitty vacuum tube scope, but you can get a rough idea what's going on here. The transistor is on when it's down there, and the diode is conducting when it's up here. And it seems to be running in a discontinuous current mode. So there is some oscillation when nothing is conducting. Neither the transistor nor the diode. So now I should probably explain what's a continuous conduction mode and discontinuous conduction mode, but let's put it into the next video. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in the part number 3. Let's check the frequency once more using my Nixie frequency counter. It's about 67 kHz.